A baseball glove is basically an addition to your hand that allows you to trap the ball between the thumb and the index finger in such a fashion that you can make a great catch and throw it back. From the time I started playing baseball, I've been in love with the game. Something very basic about it. It's not about fads or this or that. It's about a rich heritage that goes back, you know, over a hundred years. I'm Rob Story. I'm the Executive Vice President of Nakona Ball Gloves. We make world-class ball gloves here in Nakona, Texas. To build a glove, you're going to have to have the right leather. We use a number of different leathers, such as kangaroo, cowhide, buffalo, even some caiman. When that comes into us, we begin the grading process. We're looking for any blemishes, scars, defects. With a classic walnut glove, we're going to be using a leather that we call walnut crunch. It's very durable, but very easy to break in. A lot of players like that because they can go out and play catch immediately. We introduce the cutting dies, or what we call clickers. Basically big cookie cutters. We've got to take that leather and cut it into about 25 different pieces. We have somewhere about 2,000 cutting dies. While the leather's still flat, do what we call hot stamping. We'll take other pieces to the embroidery station where we have six and single head machines that can pump out four to five hundred gloves a day. Putting all that information somewhere on the leather so that the customer is educated. Once that's done, then it's time to transition over to the stitching department. Two or three of the pieces go a different direction where they're made into the web or the pocket of the glove. Another station will start the interior lining. This is the part that the hand touches not only the palm lining, but the back fingers, as well as three center pads inside. Start to welt those parts together where we're adding a third piece of material in between the seams, setting a spine to the backs of the fingers of the glove. And really at that point, begin to see the glove come together. The fingers are finally married to the front and it becomes a shell. Once you've closed a glove, it's inside out. Literally push the leather down and push the inside back to the outside. Then it's time to start shaping the glove. And we do that through a series of forms that look like giant hands. They're heated to about 250 degrees Fahrenheit, pulled around and shaped with a mallet so that all the welting and all the seams are just perfectly aligned. Living in a small town like Nakona, Texas, is a big part of who I am. I think Nakona ball gloves wouldn't necessarily work somewhere else. It's about the local people and the pride. The town itself is very much a part of the final product. I'm a fourth generation family member in the company and in the 1960s, most baseball glove manufacturers decided to take their manufacturing offshore. My grandfather, Bob Story, didn't want to do that. He wanted to give employment to the locals. He made a decision at that point that was very crucial to the long-term history of our company, and that was that we were going to be American-made. Something that's been a part of Americana for decades and decades, but they can't find anywhere else now in the United States. There are up to 40 different labor operations that go into making a glove. And so it's not just sticking a piece of leather in a machine. More and more people are starting to realize just because you can make it cheaply somewhere else, that doesn't make it good. You've got to put the very best craftsmanship into the glove. We think our history of 80 plus years of doing that, we've learned how to do it. Leather is one of the most interesting materials known to man. The feel is it firmly wraps around your hand. The subtle pop as a ball hits it. 
These characteristics are things that make crafting and with this medium one of the most enjoyable parts of my job. After the forming, marry the outside shell with the inside liner. We're going to be gluing some parts together. Sew in the inside liner. Take long strips of tensile strength laces and start filling 120 holes in the glove. Cosmoline holds the palm to the inside of the liner into a very heavy form of petroleum jelly. It looks a lot like peanut butter. It's a great adhesive. We can open up a glove 10 years later and that stuff's still sticky inside. First the top fingers, then the bottom perimeter of the glove, and finally the web, which usually kind of gives the glove its character into one finalized piece. We will physically beat the palm of the glove that softens the glove, shapes the leather, takes out all the wrinkles, and makes it just right. We take hot petroleum jelly and lanolin, and we spray that onto the glove so that we have a very uniform layer of oil that starts to moisturize the leather. Just like skin, if left to its own design, will start to dry out and crack and flake. We bag, we tag the glove, seal it up, and get it ready to go out to the market. Even though it's evolved through the years, it's still very, very personal to each player that uses a glove. I think to our customers, Nakona Ball Gloves represent a product that is rich in heritage at the top level of the game and hopefully lasts for decades to come.